your hands if you know someone who has been affected by breast cancer or know someone that knows someone. Okay, thank you. So what is breast cancer? You probably asked yourself that when, when you were inside of the, uh, the area where you, your friend or your family or your neighbor or someone was affected. But breast cancer is a disease in which malignant cancer cells form in the tissues of the breast. It is considered a heterogeneous disease, meaning that it's differing by individuals, the individual age group, and even the kinds of cells within the tumors are different. So uh, obviously no woman wants to receive this diagnosis, but hearing the word breast cancer doesn't always mean an end. It can be the beginning of learning how to fight getting the facts, and finding hope. Women in the United States get breast cancer more than any other type of cancer except for skin cancer. It is second only to lung cancer as a cause of cancer death in women. Each year in America, according to the National Breast Cancer Foundation, it is estimated that nearly 200,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer and more than 40,000 will die. Approximately 1,700 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer and 450 will die each year. The evaluation of men's breast cancer masses are similar to what women uh, have, and we'll talk about that later. There are seven types of breast cancer. The, the two that I want to talk about primarily today is the one called infiltrating ductal carcinoma, or what's called IDC. It is the most common type of breast cancer. It represents 78% of all malignancies. These lesions appear as stellar or star-like on a mammogram or a well-circumcised or circumscribed rounded areas inside of the mammograms. But the stellar or the star-like lesions generally have a poor prognosis. And then the second common type is the medullary carcinoma, which accounts for 15% of all breast cancer types. So what are the risk factors? The risk factors that we'll talk about today seem common. As you see here, they're, they're, that are listed, they seem common, and most people, you know, like it would affect most people, but there are specific things that goes along with these risk factors. In the area of age, for breast cancer, half of all women diagnosed are over the age of 65. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later because in the news in the last couple, in the last three days, uh, there's been some uh, information recently saying that, you know, when it should be tested because it is, it affects women that are over the age of 65 more often. Weight. Being obese or overweight is a factor. The lack of physical activity, a diet high in saturated fats, and alcoholic intake of more than two drinks per day puts you at risk. For uh, women, this is for women, because the men don't have to deal with this, it's the menstrual and, and the reproductive history, early menstruation or late menopause, having uh, their first child at, a, at an older age or not having given birth at all, or taking birth control pills for more than 10 years if you're under 35 puts you at a high risk. A family history of breast cancer, particularly a mother, sister, or a personal history uh, of breast cancer of a benign or benign or non-cancerous breast disease that's in your family. Some other medical and other medical and other factors are where you have dense <laughs> breast tissue, often identified in a mammogram. And, uh, and I want to add that men also have, you know, it's not so much uh, orders, but men are ordered to have breast 
mammograms when they have the signs and symptoms. Past radiation therapy to the breast and chest area could also put you at risk. So what are the signs and symptoms? This, these signs and symptoms are for men and for women. <coughs> A change in how the breast or nipple feels. Who's going to do that? Who's going to run around feeling their breasts? But anyway, so that's one of the signs and symptoms. It's just like all of a sudden it feels different. So uh, it may be tender or there's a lump or a thickening that you hadn't noticed before. So a change in how the breast nipple looks. Okay, so this change could be the size of it or maybe it was crooked and now it's straight or vice versa. All right. It was out inward and now it's out. So a change in how it looks, or it could have a, a could be uh, red or swollen, uh, or have ridges or pits, and it also could have discharge. And this applies for men and women. And then early detection. So early detection is what I want to talk about. There's changes in that recently, uh, but they they say that performing self breast exams uh, as young as age 20. It's important, and for ages 20 to 39, scheduling uh, breast exams or the mam mammograms are important every three years, and there's been changes in that. Now they're saying that you really don't have to have a mammogram until you're age 50. But those were some of the guidelines prior to the, the new recent information. But women ages 40 to 49, uh, having a mammogram every one to two years is, is important, and if you're over the age of 50, you should have a mammogram every year. And then some of the myths that we want to dispel are that finding a lump in your breast, you have breast cancer, and, and that men do not get breast cancer is a myth. To sum, to sum it up, or summarize my speech here, I'd like to um, encourage everyone to support breast cancer awareness, and I have a, some pamphlet here from the Breast Cancer Foundation that we'll be 